This is our first lesson in our unit on light, mirrors, and color. Electromagnetic radiation is a fancy term for light. Light consists of waves of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. We abbreviate an electric field with a capital E and a magnetic field, for some reason, with a capital B. The source of all light is wiggling electric charges. When an electric charge is wiggling, it's going to give off light. Just like if you take a stick and put it into a pond and wiggle it, waves will travel outward from the source of the shaking stick. If you have an electric charge, an electron for example, and it wiggles, it will emit light in every direction. Here's a model of light as a transverse wave where you can see the electric field is oscillating in one direction and the magnetic field is oscillating at 90 degrees to it. And the direction of wave travel is at right angles to both of these. Now, just because I've drawn the electric field vibrating up and down and the magnetic field vibrating sideways, that doesn't mean that that's always how light travels. As long as the electric field, the magnetic field, and the direction of wave propagation are at right angles, that's all that's required. The electromagnetic spectrum is a list of all the different types of light. Now this graphic is only meant to give you an idea of what we're talking about with regard to wavelength it's definitely not to scale. Radio waves have extremely long wavelengths in the hundreds of meters of range often. Cosmic rays, gamma rays have very very short wavelengths. So this picture is just meant to give you an idea that the wavelength gets much much smaller as you travel here to the right side of this picture. Electromagnetic waves that we can sense with our eyes, we call the visible spectrum, and the visible spectrum is a very, very narrow band of the electromagnetic spectrum. On the left we have very large wavelengths, on the right we have very small wavelengths. On the left the frequency is very, very low, on the right the frequency is very, very high. We talked in an earlier lesson with regard to waves that as the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases and vice versa. It turns out that for light, the amount of energy carried by the light is proportional to the frequency. So on the left here, low frequency means low energy. And on the right, high frequency means high energy. You can think of this picture here as a rope that's attached to the wall and you're at the other end of the rope shaking the rope up and down. How much energy would you have to put into the rope to make the rope look like it does on the left compared to how much energy would you have to put into the rope to make it look like it does on the right and I think we would agree that it would take a lot more energy for you to make the rope look like what we see on the right side of this picture. We might ask why is it that humans are only able to derive information from this very narrow band of the spectrum, which we call the visible spectrum? Why is that? One reason could be that most of the energy the Earth receives from the Sun is in the form of visible light. So it would be beneficial to creatures on this planet to be able to make sense out of that portion of light and not waste resources trying to make sense out of these other variations of the spectrum that the Sun doesn't provide much to the Earth. Light consists of oscillating electric and magnetic fields that are perpendicular to each other and both of which are perpendicular to the direction the light propagates. We are most familiar with visible light but there are many other types including radio waves, x-rays, 
as well as infrared and ultraviolet radiation. The visible spectrum is a tiny part of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. As with all waves, the frequency and wavelength of light are inversely related.